Hey guys, how's it going? Alex Allgood from Broad Productions, and today I'm going to show you all the basic information you need to know about Apple's color. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm in here in Final Cut Pro 7, right where I left off in my previous tutorial, um, how to color correct in Final Cut. Um, because we will be using the standalone program color, obviously, that's why you clicked on this. So, I have my composition here. And you're like, oh, Alex, oh, I did my whole in my, my whole video, and now I don't know how to put it in color. I mess up every time. I try to export it and import it. and No. So check it out. This is the entire thing. Totally, I just threw in footage. I haven't color corrected at all. Shot in a flat picture style. Um, and now we're going to go, or say we're ready for color correction. You have a picture lock. So we're going to go to File, Send to, Color. Now, you're going to name your sequence. For this, I'll call it. Sorry about that. I've been having some uh, technical difficulties with my microphone. My USB cable, or not USB, my XLR cable decided to crap out on me today. So, sorry if this audio sounds kind of crappy, there's any hiss or anything. So, we're going to name the uh, project name tutorial for this. Click OK. And it's going to start to open up Apple's color. Um, and here we go. It's importing the XML from Final Cut. Bada bing, bada boom. You have your entire thing all in here, all ready to go. Um, this is your entire uh, composition straight from Final Cut. As you can see right here, no different from inside color. It's just the XML straight out of the program. First things first, this tutorial isn't going to be necessarily how to color correct, but the basics of this program. Um, so I'm just going to go over how to use it and the setup it you know provides. So you, you have two windows. You have your scopes and video preview right here. And you have the actual like edit window. So there's two basic windows. And then you have all these tabs up here. And these tabs are considered rooms. Not sure why, but whenever you see room, it's just considered one of these tabs. Um, you have your primary colors, which is like the global change, the global color, and then you have secondaries. Your secondaries are going to be minor adjustments like, hey, I want to make this tree a little bit greener, so we're going to go to the secondaries and do that, but we'll explain that more later. Then you have your color effects, which I never really use, but are just effects, you know, blurs and color curves and gamma stuff and presets and stuff like that. Kind of lame. Don't really ever use them. Then you have your geometry. You can change uh, the scale, rotation, position, aspect ratio of your of this footage. Um, you can you know uh, uh, keyframe it to move around. Um, and then you have your render queue. Uh, basically, that's the all important stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the other window. You have your video preview. Obviously, this is what you see. Oh, don't want to save. Don't want to save Final Cut. Go away. Go away. Don't try to hog all the space. You have your video preview, which obviously is your video. And then you have your uh, vector scope. And then you have your uh, then you have your luminance waveform, which basically is a scale of brightness. So in a nutshell, I'll try to explain this to you. Um, you'll see this. We'll play our footage. And you'll see it moves. It moves with the footage. You can see this right here coming in right there. And it displays basically how much blacks, how much whites, uh, what's overexposed, what's not inside your video. And as you can see, I shot in a flat picture style, so I'm missing all this information right here because it goes from black to white. When you have things peaking right here, this means overexposure, which is the overexposure from the sky right here. I know a lot of you coming into color probably won't use this until you get pretty advanced inside color. Um, but always know that the waveform is a trusty sidekick because people are like oh well I can just look at the footage and then I can just tell if it's good or not there well everyone has different eyes no one sees the same thing the same exact way so trust your waveform monitor that you have true blacks true whites and same thing goes with the vector scope which is basically um, the same thing as the waveform but in a color aspect you have your red, blues, yellows, greens, cyans, magenta, and it basically points in all these directions. And since this is a kind of a green or yellow video, it's all pointing towards this yellow and green area. And that'll also play back in real time. That way you can see color spikes and stuff. Um, more advanced stuff you'll learn about later, but just so you know what it does. So now we're in our primaries room, and basically you have your shadow, midtone, and highlight, and also your color curves. Like I said in the tutorial before this, you always want to do your contrast adjustments first. So, 
we'll go ahead and slide this black and white bar, which is the contrast or uh, luma values, up and down. So um, I did shoot in a flat picture style, so we're going to take the shadows down. And if you look at our waveform, it is moving. And we want true blacks, so we're going to try to get it close to zero, um, probably to about right there. So now we have a true black in the trees and maybe in these uh, in these ferns and stuff. Then we'll mess with the um, the midtone. Probably take the midtone down a little bit as well, and uh, you know try to even this whole thing out. And then the white, um, depending on what you want, you know, don't necessarily always have to change white. But um, a cool effect I like to do is to uh, is to boost up the shadows and boost up the highlights and boost down the midtones. So that way it gives your video a very contrasty feel. Um, but for this video, it's just going to be basic color correction. And then you move this point inside this pinwheel the same way you would with the Final Cut one. You move it to the color you want. We'll have our shadows blue, our midtones a little green to boost out the life, and our highlights a little yellow. So that way it gives it just a tad bit of color. Nothing too special. Probably wouldn't keep this on the video if it was me, but you know, for the sake of the tutorial. Uh, you can do the same thing with the curves. Some of you are probably pretty familiar with color curves. Um, you just customize it like this. That looks awful. So I'm going to stop. All, when you want to reset something in color, there's a little dot in the top on everything. You can see it here. And when you change something, you can see it next to here. You want to click that dot, and that resets it. Um, and then to the side, we have our saturation, highlight, shadow saturation, master lift, and all that. Your master lift basically is just like your master brightness, darkness. Um, of course, you all know what saturation is. Basically, fancy word for black and white and how much color is there. So we can take down the saturation, um, you know. And again, like I said, there's a little dot. So we can just go right back to normal on that. Um, and then down here, you have the timeline. Um, to play your footage, click L. To stop your footage, click K. And to play it backwards, click J on the keyboard. Um, and that should be, that's really most the the keyboard shortcuts I use in here. Um, then we're going to go to the secondaries. Secondaries, like I mentioned earlier, basically are um, when you want to fine tune a certain part of the image. In no way does a secondary invoke color correcting the entire thing. That's what the primary is for. So you adjust the primaries and you're like, oh god, well, all this looks good, but then this makes the tree look really crappy. So you enable your secondary. And see, you have all, you have eight rooms down here, so you can have up to eight separate adjustments inside this one piece of footage, which is really cool. So you can get things super detailed. So say, say I want this uh, this white to be gone. So I'm gonna click this pin tool right here. I'm gonna it's gonna have these crosshairs, and with my mouse, I'm gonna click the white. Then you're gonna see this right here with these three uh, buttons, these like look flag looking things. I'm gonna click the black and white one. And basically, wherever's white, that's what the color's going to change when I adjust it. Whatever's black, it will ignore. So I'm just going to adjust this to get just the sky using the the values here, um, and uh, try to make it as white as possible. Mine's a little gray now, um, and we'll just slide it back and forth, trying to get as good as we can. Um, and but that'll do for right now. So basically, these three flag things—that's the mat it's creating. This one will be all black and white, and what's in color will be what you're changing, but since we're changing a white sky, you can't tell. And this is your final result. Anytime we move the slider, it will change, as you can see right here. Just the sky. That looks awful. Um, but, you know, not a good idea because you can obviously tell it's overexposed, but you can change it certain colors if you want. And this blue, I guess you can maybe make it look a little overcasty by darkening it like that but not advised for this overexposed sky. Um, so that's how basically the secondaries work. You can also make a vignette and have the secondary masked off one position. And you can adjust the, the vignette all throughout here. Uh, but we don't need that now. Um, and then you have your hue curve, which is, you know, the colors. Uh, instead of doing it through uh, your three-point color wheel, you can always adjust it with the hue curve. Um, you have your saturation curve and your luma curve, which luma, if none of you know, is the fancy word for brightness, um, basically, um, in a nutshell, I guess, um, easiest way to say it. And of course you have all these here, you have your key blur, which will blur out the edges of the mask it, or the mat it created, and, uh, you know, your saturation, all that jazz. 
and you're good to go. Um, so basically, what I do is I do all my primaries, do all my secondaries, move to the next clip. Do the same, do the same, and you're ready to go. So once you get done color correcting inside color and you're satisfied with your work, you go to the last room, render queue, and you click add all. And then you click start render. It'll render out all your footage and you're good to go. And then the very last step to get it back into Final Cut for editing is you go to File, Send to Final Cut Pro. And I didn't render my uh, video for the sake of this tutorial, but not all your clips are rendered. Continue, yes. Um, and then it says the unread render will link to the original in Final Cut Pro. So if, say, you didn't want to color correct one piece of footage in your video, when you put it back in Final Cut, it will be unaffected, but all the rest will be your edited. So it sends it right back to Final Cut, it makes a new sequence in your browser. It says from color. It should say the same one. Mine, I'm lazy, and it says sequence one. So you click from color, and you now have the color corrected footage. Uh, you can't tell because I did not render mine out again. But if you were to render it out, it would be changed right here. And uh, and then if you have any audio, any adjustments, anything, it is set back. It's exactly as sequence one. Just your footage is color corrected. All your audio, all your adjustments, all your filters. Everything is transferred over to the sequence one. So you don't have to worry about losing anything because color correction typically is the last segment. Um, you know, again, I don't want to, God, Final Cut's trying to be popular. Um, typically, you create a picture lock, then you color correct. So when you have all that footage together and all those adjustments and stuff, um, it will stay. Just trying to get my point across so you guys know that. Um, do whatever you need to do in sequence one before color correcting color correct and it'll be all the same in the second one You don't have to like scramble to put your footage together then color correct then do everything else Now my friends calling me. Okay, God everyone's just trying to get up on my balls today um, Excuse me, but that's really all you need to know about color again. This has been a basic tutorial um, Just the overview of color. Uh, I will be doing more advanced tutorials on certain things inside color so make sure to subscribe or, uh, you know, click the little button above that shows more videos from me and check out some of my other tutorials. Um, I'm a film school student and I need some money so I can move out to L.A. and get in the industry. And, uh, you know, checking out my tutorials is the most amazing thing you can do for me. <laughs> but I want to sound like I'm, I'm begging. So you guys are wonderful. Have a great day. If you need any help or have any requests, leave a comment below, or better yet, leave a video response. See you guys later. Peace out, Girl Scout.